Man, this fish has taken half of my line and it's still going. Fishing from the shore, jet skis or small boats, New Zealand harbours are a fantastic place to catch big fish. On this episode of Fishy Business, we share some fantastic harbour fishing and diving and get a few surprises along the way. Look at that line. He's been eaten by another shark. Over 10 pounds of trevally, that's my personal best. A harbour is defined as a body of water that is generally calm and safe from rough weather. Harbours can be formed naturally by sandbars and rocky foreshores or created by man. Hi, welcome to Daiwa Fishy Business. Well today we're at the magnificent Paringaringa Harbour in the far north. It's beautiful, it's got the sun shining off the white silica sand, it is an absolutely amazing day. And what we're talking about today is harbour hotspots, and Paringaringa would have to be one of the best of them. But in New Zealand we're really blessed with a lot of really, really good natural harbours that fill up with fish at certain times. I can't wait to get a bait in the water, and then we'll talk about some of the tips and tricks for being successful in harbour hotspots. Unlike fishing off surf beaches, Long casts are not really needed when fishing in harbours. It's more important to make sure you fish the edges of channels or where the food's likely to be. So what I'm using is a couple of 13 foot surf rods. I've got a Daiwa Optus bait and run on this one and I'm setting the bait and run quite tight because we're fishing the current actually going out, the tide's going out at the moment about two and a half knots. So when a fish hits, this can run and I can just widen the handle and I've got my normal drag. So that's the way to set it up. We're setting a trap for a big fish as it comes along. I didn't have to wait long for the action to start. Yep. Get into this one nice and early. Man, this fish has taken half of my line and it's still going. It's got so much power. I was waiting to get a first glimpse of the fish as it came over the sandbar. Then I saw its fin break the surface. It was a shark. The sharks are school sharks, and they're also known as taupe. They're powerful fighters and give a good account of themselves on surf casting gear. School sharks usually enter harbours in spring, and they can be a nuisance to fishermen. They're good to eat as long as you prepare them quickly and take the skin off. Some people soak them in milk before cooking them. This is said to reduce the ammonia taste. So that's, that's one of the school sharks that we've been dealing with. Big fat shark, probably about a four or five footer. Hooked nicely in the mouth so we'll be able to let it go. Like any, any shark, you've got to be careful. They've got teeth and they can bite. And these are big fat sharks, these ones. So I'm going to break the line off. The hook's just in the corner of the jaw there. Then I'll uh, let it go. The conditions were great and it was a bite a bait. Well, this rig met the same fate as the first rig. Got bitten off, so I suspect there's a few sharks out there. But that's all right, where there's sharks, there's food. When there's food, there's other fish. So we'll rig up and go again. I've actually gone to an 8 bar O mustard ultra point octopus hook just to uh, handle those larger fish. The day surf casting in the harbour was going great, with heaps of bites and a few good fish coming to shore. Just had a bit of a touch, pulled the sinkers out. Oh, there it is, yep. 
and the line went slack. Oh, and we think we know what this one is because it's jumping all over the sea. It's one of our favourite fish, the kawai. Harbours are really interesting ecosystems. Some fish come to chase prey, while some large fish come into harbours to spawn. Fish will go into very shallow water in harbours. It's not uncommon to find large fish in under a metre of water. Magnificent bluey colour up here in this beautiful clear harbour. The smoke fish dinner's looking pretty good tonight. That's a good sized fish. Probably work as a live bait round here, but I uh, haven't brought my live baiting gear. The day surf casting in the harbour was going great, with heaps of bites and a few good fish coming to shore. There was one species I was really hoping to catch. This was a silver trevally. The Northland harbours are famous for these fish and they grow to really good sizes. Hopefully I can eat this before my next bite. I love the feeling of the, the line being pulled against the drag. It's one of those things you fish for. You're always working up and down that lip. This feels nice. Holding on to this one so far. Just got to pull them over the, the sand lip. And I haven't lost them so far. Hasn't been a, a pulling as hard as the uh, the other bite, so maybe it's something different other than a shark. He's going to have to follow him now, he's going down the beach a bit. Not too far away. Come on. Awesome, it's a trev. Trevally. One of the, one of the premium fish in this harbour. And uh, this will make a, a, a great fish for the smoker. I'll just drag him up the beach. It's not a bad size one either. Wow, that's a, an awesome trev. I know about probably four kilos. They can get up to 10 kilos in this harbour. And that's a magic fish. These trevally have uh, got rubber lips and big grinding pads. They mainly feed on shellfish. This one took a piece of skipjack tuna though. Very powerful in the tail. I fight really hard. Well, the harbour hotspot fired today. Been out for about four hours. Got trevally, kawai, school sharks. Had great fun. The rod's been bending all day. It's just been magnificent. And that's what harbours can be like. They change with the season, so sometimes you get snapper, sometimes you get trevally, sometimes you get kingies. You just never know. And you just got to be prepared for that. Today we were targeting trevally and we got one nice trevally. So mission accomplished. Harbour hotspots. Heaps of fun. Coming up, Darren has an awesome dive in Whangarei Harbour where he comes up with a real seafood smorgasbord. Ever wondered what can be found in our harbours? Often some of your best opportunities can be found at your feet. Harbours and estuaries hold good numbers of fish and shellfish. Slight hiccup to plans, we've come across a boat that's broken down just as we've left, left the uh, harbour entrance or left the marina entrance. So one rule of the ocean is if you come across somebody that's in trouble, you look after them, you get them back to safety. So these guys weren't in much danger because we're only just out the entrance of the marina we've still got to assist them to get back in and hopefully they can fix their problem and get on with their day. And hopefully we'll still be alright with the tide. We've still got a couple of hours so we'll get straight to the spot and get into it before it becomes slack tide. It was a short tow then we were underway. Jackson, my son, is in charge of the boat. He's taking us to a spot we've never dived. But by understanding a few principles you can find fish. We've got the incoming tide, which is what we want to fish, because the incoming tide brings the clearer water in. Obviously, if the tide's going out, it'll bring all the dirty water from the mangroves and you know industry and things like that. So we're going to have a crack at a couple of kingies here on a rock, and then we're going to go back up into the harbour and look for some shellfish like scallops and pippies and that sort of thing. Notice the flag on the weddy float boat. It's really important to let boats know you're in the water. Take a little time to breathe up and relax. Your first few dives are the hardest until you loosen up. 
I make sure I'm weighted correctly so I can sink slowly the last five metres or so. If you do this, it's less threatening to fish on the bottom. Too much movement spooks them. These perori are not target species, but a trevally in the middle of them is. With me staying reasonably still, the trevally just followed the perori, which was a bad move. I love trevally as a raw fish dish. Jackson's found a very easy John Dory. They love the weed edges and use the weed as camouflage, but can also go a very light colour like the sand. They have a huge mouth that telescopes out, which they use to suck fish in with. Work weed edges slowly for these, cover enough ground and you'll eventually find one. Red mullet are an underrated fish here in New Zealand compared to other countries. I love them, they're easy to shoot and there's plenty of them. Gathering bait like this is a good sign for something bigger. Kingfish love these jack mackerel. Any structure with bait is where you should stay. Make sure when you get in this situation, don't take panic shots or shoot from too far away. Kingfish are a very inquisitive fish. Give them a chance and they'll come close to you. We're using very small guns, best for shooting up close and in dirty water, like in harbours. This means we've got to get closer to ensure the spear goes right through a fish of this size. Bigger guns have more power and better range. Jackson's taking his time to haul in this kingy, otherwise he could pull the spear out and lose the fish. If possible, keep it away from structure and weed. Once they tangle, you generally lose them. a bad dive. You'll see we're shooting these little goat fish. They're beautiful roasted up. We've scaled them and we'll gut them and roasted them up with a whole lot of vegetables and things. They're, they're really nice but you know three John Dory and a kingfish and a few goat fish makes for a reasonable start to the day. So we've got them in the old weddy float boat here but I'll open it to give you a look. Put a bit of water in with them bit of salt water, keep them cool, but there's our catch. It's not bad for a morning in a harbour. Right, we've moved to the scallop bed. I'm just going to chuck a couple of the boys in to see if there's any scallies here. There was some here a few weeks ago, but it's very, very shallow. It's, uh, it's about three or four metres deep here, and we're hoping there's scallops, so we'll soon see. We'll get the boys in the water and see if we can find some. The things with these scallops here is, there's not a lot of them. It's a nice clean bottom, but they hunker right down. There's lots of tide, and being so shallow, they suck themselves right down on the sand. So you're looking for that nice circle in the sand is what you're sort of trying to find as you go down. And we'll see how good these boys are at finding things. Jackson got onto them straight away. It's shallow and relatively clear, making it easy. Scallops are filter feeders, they eat plankton. Water moves over their filtering system where plankton becomes trapped in the mucus. Scallops can be dangerous to hunt. You tend to want to grab more than your breath allows. Each time you go to swim up, you see another. Don't fall into this trap. Go up, relax, get another good breath, then dive again. Be safe. It's not worth your life. Don't move too fast, it's easy to miss them. I like to hover up to a metre above the bottom to get a better view. Jackson checks the sizes with a weddy scallop measure, which is built into the handle. Spot the sole, great camo. Unlike other shellfish, scallops can swim. Clapping their shells fires a water jet past the shell hinge. 
This puts them in the animal family of squid, octopus, snails and other shellfish like mussels, clams and oysters. Jackson uses the weight of the bag of the scallops to sink slowly to the bottom and conserve oxygen. But remember, you have to swim the bag back up, be careful. If you find the bag too heavy, you can attach it to a float for safety. The Weddy Scallop Bag makes it so easy to measure your scallops while still on the bottom. The bag is looking like we've got enough. So we've got our 100 scallops, we're allowed 20 per diver and we're allowed 20 for the boatman. So we've had four of us in the water. We've sorted them in the water with a wetty scallop bag. There's a measure on it, you check them on that. And now we're just recounting and rechecking to make sure our, our um, tally is correct before we go in. So it's been a great day really. Wongarei Harbour, we've shot kingfish, John Dory, Trevally, red mullet. Believe it or not, red mullet are really nice to eat. And now we've finished off the day with scallops. And I think it's just past lunchtime. So all in a good morning's work. Next up, Kirk gets bitten more than once when he heads out oh. harbour fishing on the Wave Runner. Here we go. It's a lot of colour there. Today I'm fishing a far north harbour. Northland harbours don't come any better for fishing. Some of them can be really pristine, they can be full of fish at the right time of year. I don't know what I'm going to catch today, it's such a beautiful location, I'm not really that worried to be honest. So I'm going to head out now, see what's cranking. The conditions in the harbour were perfect, and as I'd never been there before, I had a quick look around before deciding on a likely looking spot. The current was really running in the harbour, and it took a couple of goes to get the anchor to stick. Wind's just started to pick up a little bit now, so I've anchored off this big beach, a big spit. Big sandy beach, it drops off quite steep down to about 10 metres. And I'm sitting about 50 metres off it. Looks to me to be a prime place with the current where the fish are going to come in and feed. Lots of little eddies, lots of banks, all sorts of opportunity for different size fish to be here. And if there's different sized fish, then the bigger fish will prey on the smaller fish. So let's hope we get a big one shortly. Once anchored up though, it didn't take long for the bites to start. With so many species in the harbour and such a strong current, it wasn't immediately obvious what this first fish could be. But I was soon pleasantly surprised. For this type of fishing, I've paired my Daiwa Sea Line SL30 spooled with 15 kilo line with my Saltist Hyper Rod. And a nice snapper. That's what we're here for. It's going on ice in the icy tech. I have a three ounce sinker above the swivel and I've attached it to a hundred pound trace because in this neighbourhood, you never know what's going to come biting. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, come on. No, he's still there, he's still there. Yep, fish on. The initial run was blistering and really got the line Oi. crackling. Look at that line. That is smoking. Somehow I don't think it's a snapper. He's just running into the harbour. Can't stop him yet. It's a good one. Ooh. I was on that big side of car wise, so it could be anything. It could be a shark, kingfish. Probably only one of those two, the way it's fighting. No way it's a snapper unless it's a 40 pounder. I'm pretty sure it's not a 40 pounder. Never know though, eh? Fight every fish like it's your trophy. Because you never know, one day it will be. Definitely behaving like a shark now. Turns, runs up the ski. Here we go, it's coming at me again. 
real fast. These school sharks that you can get in the harbour. Oh, here we go. He's right here. Oh, he's been eaten by another shark. Another shark's attacked him on the way up. Look at that. He's lost his tail. Oh. Shark bait, eh? Who would have thought that shark was shark bait? Judging by the size of the bite radius on the school shark, whatever hit this one was a big one, enough to make me a little nervous sitting here on the ski. As the day wore on, I decided to head back towards the ramp for one last go at a trophy fish, and what a decision that turned out to be. Here we go. Just goes to show fishing in here in the shallow. You never know what you're gonna get. I'm surrounded by snags, poles, Anchor ropes down, there's rocks everywhere. Oh, I still haven't seen this, I don't know what it is yet. Here it comes. It's getting close now, I can see it, but every time it gets near the ski, it runs off again. So a lot of colour there. Fishing on my own on the wave runner means that I have to land my own fish, which can often be a challenge. This big bad boy was putting up a fight to the very end and took more than a couple of nervous attempts to get into the net. Oh, that is a monster Trevally. Look at that for a fantastic fish to end the trip on. Over 10 pounds of Trevally, that's my personal best caught in the harbour, just minutes from shore, minutes from the ramp. What an absolute beautiful fish.